The next story has got to be one of the most chilling stories ever told on the channel. Here you can see what looks like a couple of innocent looking females riding a carnival ride. But there's something extremely disturbing going on that you probably may not be aware of. Here's a dramatized version of the occurrence, as well as more context during and at the end of the story. I've always been a huge fan of carnivals, and I would attend them every summer. The majority of rides such as the roller coasters were an obvious choice for thrill seekers such as myself. And one of my all-time favorites is the classic steel roller coaster with its deep drops, sharp turns, and of course its exhilarating loops. As I fell in line, I could hardly breathe from the congestion, but convinced myself that it was worth the wait. I was always wary for my safety because of movies like Final Destination, but more importantly because of an actual death that occurred at this very same carnival. The majority of rides such as the roller coasters were an obvious choice for thrill seekers such as myself. I made sure to always keep those thoughts in the back of my mind though, considering I didn't want to tarnish the experience. As I gradually moved along the lineup, I had this nagging feeling that someone was gazing at me from amongst the crowd. Looking across a sea of people, it was difficult to pinpoint where that strange aura emanated from, and this feeling of being watched was really creeping me out. But as I got on the coaster, I felt a tingling sensation down my spine. I turned my head and saw a deranged woman with a bloody gash on the side of her face. Get off the ride now! What? Is this everything okay? Get off the ride now! And why would I get do off. that? Get off, get off, get off, get off. She began repeating herself while slamming her forehead against the ride's handlebars. And then, I got startled by the sight of an obese old man. His shirt didn't fit right, and he lifted it up, exposing a hairy belly soaking in sweat. As I gazed my eyes back towards the woman, there was no sign of her. I shook my head and tried to get it out of my mind, convincing myself it was nothing but mere imagination. Approaching me little by little, I averted my gaze, hoping the man would skip the vacant seat next to me. However, my worst fear was realized when he forced himself to fit in the vehicle's frame. Annoyed by the simple fact he was too big, he yelled at one of the staff saying, Hey you! Why are you just standing there? Help me fit into this thing! The staff reluctantly replied, I'm sorry sir, the vehicle has a maximum limit. But if I may... What the hell are you trying to say? The old man interrupted, his eyes glaring at the staff. Then, two other attendants arrived at the scene, persuading Mr. Piggy to get off the platform, but to no avail. And so, with all their might, they squeezed his body, putting me to the side. As the coaster was getting ready to launch, I felt the old man's greasy body pressing against my arm. I don't know what condition he had, but he appeared to have pus-filled bumps underneath his skin, which caused my stomach to churn even before the coaster was launched. Upon eavesdropping, I heard some operators talking about a slight technical glitch, raising a couple eyebrows and pulses from the riders. However, that wasn't the only thing that bothered me though. Since it was going to take longer for the coaster to start, it meant that I was stuck here next to a guy who was anything but attractive. Then, he whispered in a seductive but revolting way. Hey there, cutie. Don't worry. At least we'll get to spend more time together. What? Look, we don't even know each other, okay? So stop talking to me. I replied. Oh, it's my lucky day. I never thought I'd sit next to a girl who tickles my funny bone. You're so hot. You must like a lot of things. <laughs> I ignored him after that. Then, when the operators had given us the thumbs up, the coaster finally moved, slowly climbing up the slope. But with the introduction of the ride gradually taking place, there wasn't much to distract me nor the creepy old man who was adamant. He thought I was playing hard to get, and so he pursued me intending to get my number, social media accounts, home address, and all other personal stuff, which made me more uncomfortable than I already was. Hey babe, look how high we are! Unbelievable! This ride is still going up! Can you take a wild guess what else is going up? He said, drooling on his belly. The stench of his breath was so unbearable that getting to the highest peak felt like forever. This is the only time I'm gonna say this, so make sure you get it through your thick skull. Stop talking to me. <laughs> Whatever you say, pumpkin. He replied with a wink. Then, as we finally reached the sun, convinced he'd already thrown the towel, the man licked my face out of the blue. My skin then felt covered in nasty goo. I desperately wanted to get off the cart, but we were so high up that I couldn't take my hands off the handle. Besides, at any moment, the coaster would resume and release the entire vehicle allowing gravity to take its course as we raced through the tracks. In a nutshell, I simply had no choice. People from the other carts were now glancing at us like we were a couple in the middle of a lover's quarrel. Then, seconds later, I took a sidelong glance and noticed the old man was annoyed by all the unwanted attention. And with a surprisingly swift move of his arm, he placed it around my shoulders and yelled, Piss off, alright? Mind your own business! 
I know my girlfriend's chickening out, but that's why I'm here! All she needs is me! I looked him in the eyes and said, Cut it out, will ya? When was the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror? Who would want to have a sweaty, stinky, wild boar for a boyfriend? Oh yeah, no one. All the others chuckled, eyeing the creepy old man with prejudice. I was afraid I might have struck a wrong chord, but it was too late to worry about that now. Besides, this would all be over in a jiffy. Then, as the ride was released, allowing momentum and acceleration to guide our thrilling experience, the creep beside me started trying to unbuckle my seatbelt. Amidst the air resistance, I yelled, Are you nuts? What the hell do you think you're doing? His eyes never left my seatbelt. Then, as his gaze returned to me, he smiled a sinister grin and said, This is gonna be a wild ride, baby! Stop it! Get your hands off of me! He continued to yank the seatbelt until it finally came off. And the next thing I knew, my body was swinging around like a twig. <laughs> I held on for dear life, certain I would end up in a hospital bed, dead, or barely breathing. But by some odd miracle, I managed to survive this ordeal. The ride came to a stop, and that's when the other riders started engaging in a fight with whom they still thought was my boyfriend. Then, moments later, the attendants came to my aid. I wanted so badly to run after that creep. However, he found a way to escape unnoticed. And even after consulting with the security team, it was impossible to hold him accountable since it was like searching for a needle in a haystack. But after reflecting on the incident, I truly believe that he was the very same man who took the life of that young girl in the carnival years back. But what still gets me to this day was the warning our spirit tried to give me. Here's the footage that you saw earlier. If you take a closer look, you can see a female ghost sitting beside the two girls wearing pink. The female ghost appears to be wearing a white shirt and clearly has a bizarre burn look on the side of her face. But what makes this footage eerie was how the female ghost suddenly vanishes from the camera shot. The next story was inspired by the classic dunk tank clown tormenting the guests, which you can see in this video clip. The clown says some pretty harsh insults with zero filter, so you can imagine how badly one would want to hit the target. We wanted to create a nightmare fuel that may leave future fairgoers to perhaps keep it shut and let the clown do the talking, cause you know, it may be a nice jester. Last summer, I moved to a new town during the break. It kind of came out of nowhere, so I really wasn't able to say goodbye to any of my friends, and since I hadn't gone to school in my new area, I didn't know anybody in my neighborhood. I was really by my lonesome, and since I was an only child, I didn't even have a brother or even a sister to hang out with. All I had was the ancient original PlayStation and a handful of games. As you can imagine, I got bored of playing the same games I'd been playing for basically my whole life, so after a few weeks of cabin fever, I decided to go for a walk around my neighborhood to see if I could meet someone by chance and maybe make a much needed friend. One of the first things I noticed was a bunch of weird sounds, like some kind of theme park was hiding in the trees. I thought it was a little out of place for me being in the middle of a suburb, but I walked on to try and find it. A few blocks down, I ran into this kid named Victor. He struck up conversation and we talked for a little while and things seemed pretty friendly. I was excited to have finally found a friend after spending so much time cooped up by myself. I asked to trade numbers since he was pretty cool and I thought we might hang out later. He agreed, but to my surprise, he wanted to hang out right then and there. You want to go to the carnival down the road? You'll need a few bucks for tickets and stuff. There's a carnival in the neighborhood? Yeah, can't you hear those sounds? Well, I did bring my allowance, so yeah, I guess I can go. I was interested to see this hidden carnival, and I figured I'd never get a better chance to meet my neighbors until the school year. We followed the sounds until we reached the end of the cul-de-sac, then walked through a decorated path in the woods until we rounded a bend in the flashing lights finally appeared. 
It was a decently sized carnival, and it was pretty packed. There were a couple of mini roller coasters, a bunch of those spinning rides, a ferris wheel, and a whole lot of games. Victor pointed out this one particular game that he wanted to play. It was a dunk tank, where there's a clown sitting on a trap door above a big tank of water, and you try and hit the switch to drop him in it. As we approached the tank, I couldn't help but notice that the clown was giving me a really weird look. Five bucks for three balls, boys. I usually give the males only two, but y'all fit perfectly in the female category. <laughs> Come on, hit me with your best shot. You got five bucks? Um, yeah, I'm in if you're in. Come on, it's only five bucks. Don't worry, I won't tell your mom that you spent five bucks for a new pair. <laughs> We both entered the contest and decided to stagger out throws. Victor had a good arm, but he just barely missed. I screwed up my first throw when the ball slipped out of my fingers. Victor almost hit the target again, but he still hadn't dialed it in. I had a feeling the balls were tricky somehow, or that the game was rigged. I got a better grip, but the ball still didn't go where I thought it would. Then, Victor and I both missed our last shots. Uh-oh, better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> but right as I was about to walk away, Victor ran up to the tank and punched the target with his bare hand. The clown went straight down into the tank and immediately started flailing and freaking out, screaming and cursing at us. You little rats! Do you know how long it took me to become a clown? Um, uh, zero seconds? He made me do it. What? No, I didn't. I'm gonna throw you in the tank and make you wet like your mother! Run, dude! We both sprinted away from the clown as fast as we could, weaving through the crowds and rides to get him off our trail. Once we were sure that we'd lost him, we got in line for the best attraction at the whole carnival, the bungee launch. There was a huge line that doubled back several times, so once we got through the first bend, we knew that insane clown would never be able to find us. Hey man, I'm really sorry about that. I really wanted to see him get dunked, but once I saw how crazy he got, I knew I couldn't handle the heat by myself. You got your five bucks worth, though. Right? Yeah, that was worth the money. And you're all right, man. Just don't do it again. Pretty soon, we forgot about the whole dunk tank incident altogether. The anticipation for the bungee launch was building. The cage-like enclosure could only hold two riders at a time, but it took off into the sky with lightning speed. Some of the riders couldn't handle it. They'd come back down from the heights all shaken up and crying. That just made it look even more of an adrenaline rush. After about 45 minutes, we were finally at the front. We climbed into the cage and got into the seats. Then, the attendant strapped us in and sealed the exit. As we waited for the hydraulic weights to build up the tension in the bungee cords, Victor started laughing. <laughs> you ready to die? I thought he meant it as a joke, just something to freak me out right before the ride started, but it didn't sound very funny. The attendant started counting down from five, but in a classic misdirection, he skipped counting to one and just launched it on two. However, right before he sent us flying, that psychotic clown from the dunk tank ran up to the platform and jumped on me grabbing a hold of my vest harness and ascending with us. He was holding on with his bare hands while yelling, I'm gonna eat your face, you little brat! Immediately, the attendant pulled the crazed lunatic off of me. I frantically unbuckled my harness and bolted off the platform, out of the carnival and into the woods. When I finally got back to the neighborhood, I felt a semblance of safety. There, an older couple found me in my shaken state and offered to escort me home and call the cops. When my parents found out, I never heard the end of it. They wanted to press charges and have the clown arrested, but all I wanted to do was get into bed and rest, and maybe forget about the whole thing. But even when I was allowed to go to bed, I wasn't able to unsee it. At around 3 in the morning, I got a disturbing text message. I couldn't sleep, so I got up to read it. It was from Victor. It read, Sorry, Dad. You were so close to getting him. Maybe next time, okay? And that's when my stomach began turning. I stared at my phone, trying to make sense of what I just read. But in that time, Victor texted me again, saying, Whoops, wrong number. Never mind that. 
Since then, I've blocked Victor's number and made a conscious effort to never see him again. It doesn't take a forensic scientist to figure out that the clown that tried to kill me was Victor's dad and that they premeditated the whole thing, using Victor as a distraction to put me in the wrong place at the wrong time. I just don't know why they get off from killing innocent bystanders. You just have to be criminally insane to understand such a thing. The next story was inspired by the video footage you see here. Looks pretty intense, right? Luckily, the hero in this case left with little to no injuries at all. We wanted to create something based on this occurrence, but with some added fuel to the fire that you may find horrifying. Here's what it looked like. After graduating high school, I felt like I deserved to soak in the freedom for at least the summertime. Even though the heat was sweltering, I did go to my friend's house a few times here and there. We usually played together online, but sometimes we like to go old school and play split screen. I was content with everything, but my friend was getting into the spirit of trying new things. Dude, I don't feel like wasting my whole summer playing video games. We should go somewhere and do something. Okay, like what? Well, there's a carnival in town for the summer. I hear the tickets are mad cheap. A carnival? I don't feel like standing around and sweating in line just to ride some boring old ride that's probably gonna end me. You wimp. Are you gonna stay at home with a box of tissues and lotion the whole summer? Or are you coming to the carnival? At least I don't waste my money on anyone. Dude, we're virgins! If we keep playing Call of Duty all damn day, we'll never get our feet wet. Do you want an AT&T plan, or do you want to be stuck on Virgin Mobile for the rest of your damn life? Fine, I'll go, alright. Right before I got home, my friend told me about a movie I should watch to get me into carnival rides and quell my fears. He said it was called Final Destination. I never heard of it before, as my parents never let me watch any R-rated movies. When I got home, I started watching it in my room. At first, everything seemed normal about the movie, but then things took a horrific turn. After the first couple outrageous series of events, I finally realized that it was just a dumb horror movie and turned it off and went to bed. But when I finally managed to sleep, I had vivid nightmares. I envisioned I was at the top of a huge Ferris wheel. Then I noticed it wasn't moving. Everything around me started swirling and pushing me. And then, I was suddenly ejected and plummeted to the concrete. But right when I was about to hit the ground, I woke up in a cold sweat. I was exhausted, but I couldn't go back to sleep, so I decided to take a shower. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a stream of blood gushing from my nose. I figured I'd scratch myself in my sleep while having that nightmare, so I plugged it up and forgot about it. I got my shower, and a couple hours later left to meet my friend at the carnival. We met right around sundown, and even though all the flashing lights were on, and everybody seemed pretty happy, I was still filled with anxiety. I'd been scared of carnival rides since I was a kid, and then after that movie and my dreams from the previous night, the dread was consuming me. Dude, check out that Ferris wheel. It's so tall. I bet we could see our houses from the top. Come on. I, I don't know, dude. Doesn't that seem kind of lame? I don't give a crap about the ride, okay? They're all lame. Just focus on the babes in line. Hurry up. While we waited in line behind those girls, neither of us said a word. We just shuffled along, waiting to be hoisted into the sky. When we got close, I saw a bunch of random screws all over the ground. Hey man, I don't think this thing is structurally sound. Maybe we shouldn't ride it. Are you crazy? We're about to get on, and the conductor's gonna put all four of us together. So go a pair of oranges, raisin nuts. To his dismay, the conductor actually let those girls go in their own car. My friend was silently seething over this, but I was honestly glad. I was already nervous about the ride itself, and I didn't need the pressure of talking to two random girls on top of it. Still, figured it was a bad time to ask him to abort. I don't really remember getting onto the ferris wheel, like I was in some sort of trance where I wasn't in control of my actions. When I finally came to, we were already at the top. For a moment it was awesome. There was a cool breeze and a field of stars and all the carnival lights below us. But just as I was getting used to it, the whole structure shuddered and groaned. Somehow, the whole rig was off balance and the motor was still running. We swooped down on one side and shot right back up on the other side, entering into this hellish rotation that just kept getting faster and faster. What the hell is going on? Uh, this is all your fault! Somebody help! The only thing keeping us from flying out of the car was our own grip on the metal lap bars that weren't even locked in place. Ah! Eventually, somebody down on the ground hit the emergency brake. It was an awful grinding sound that vibrated through my teeth, slowing the whole thing to a halt. When it got down to a safe speed, 
people who were passing by the bottom decided to jump out. My friend and I both noticed this, and we agreed silently that we would jump out of this thing the first chance we got. Unfortunately, we didn't get that chance just yet. Our whole carriage slowly began to tip 90 degrees to one side. Then, right as we were about to tip past the point of no return, we finally stopped moving. I was grabbing onto whatever I could find, not knowing what else to do as my worst nightmare was coming true. Somebody help, please! Dude, there's someone coming to get us down! I hadn't realized I was crying, but I wiped my tears away and peeked over the edge. Sure enough, there was some middle-aged man climbing up the trusses of the Ferris wheel, along with a few other workers from the carnival. He was right below us, but he was taking his time as he climbed to make sure everyone else who was still trapped was okay and could safely find their way down. It was an agonizing wait, but eventually, the man climbed up to our car and stood on the outside of the sideways walls of the carriage, telling us not to move. He started messing with the hinge, but unfortunately, something he did caused the hinge to get unstuck all at once, leaving nothing for the man to stand on. Ah! I could only watch as he plummeted to the ground. He miraculously got up with a few scratches and bruises, but unfortunately, his well-being was the last of my worries. I then felt the entire ferris wheel detach and begin to roll down the carnival. My friend and I both held on for dear life as the wheel began plowing through everything in its path. I was convinced my sadistic dream was literally manifesting before my eyes. But then, my friend grabbed my wrist and yanked me off the wheel. We both landed on a bender filled with stuffed animals as I watched the ferris wheel collapse from a distance. To this day, I still can't thank Josh enough for saving my life. But at the same time, I still hold resentment for his constant prodding to attend the carnival. Maybe we were better off as acquaintances than friends, which is exactly what ended up happening. Five bucks for three balls, boys. I usually give the males only two, but y'all fit perfectly in the female category. <laughs> Come on, hit me with your best shot. You got five bucks? 